requirements for all the products, uh, especially like all the, the documentation has to be in Spanish. You know, we have a prime opportunity right now in Mexico to enter um, based on the economic condition. Mexico is currently the 13th, or hovering around the 13th largest economy, economy in the world, and they're the second largest trading country in Latin America. And there are several reasons that we have a good opportunity. In 1994, Mexico suffered extreme uh, devaluation of the peso, which is their national currency. And the economy kind of had a, a bit of a depression for a while. But they have since recovered, and they are a newly recovering economy and a new growth economy, but they have been growing in the past decade at a steady rate every year in the, a positive growth rate. They have also had, for the past eight to ten years, a steady rate of inflation, which has been hovering around 4%, which is low for their country. And currently, this year, they have hit a record low for inflation, around 3.5%. And so there's a prime opportunity to, for us to enter the market while costs are low, inflation is low, and the market is only going to grow from here. In addition, they are a primarily export-based economy. Over 50% of their income comes from exports. And of those 50%, 82% comes from the United States. So the United States is a very big partner of Mexico, and, and they are extremely influenced by the United States economy. Mexico, Mexico's government currently is wishing to get away from that. They want to reduce their dependence on the United States. Because as you can see from the current economic crisis in America, when America is suffering economically, Mexico does also. And so they are looking to encourage foreign investment, specifically from Europe. They want to get away from the United States. And since they are looking to Europe, it is a prime opportunity to, for us to be importing from Spain because we are in Europe. And it's a good and it is an enticing opportunity for Mexico as well. In addition, there are free trade agreements with 44 different countries in Mexico, including NAFTA. They have agreements with Japan, with Italy, um, with the EU. Um, <coughs> and as a result of these, all these economic reforms and, and different trade agreements, the economic situation in Mexico significantly relaxed from the way it was um, in the 70s and the 80s. And a lot, they had a lot of legal restrictions imposed, especially on foreign companies operating in the country. And as a result, Primarily of new administration, a more liberal administration, they have deregulated a lot of the laws that have existed since the 70s. And the trade agreements have helped, as well as the new administration. And they currently have a, a fairly new president. He was elected in 2006. And his regime has made it their priority to work on increasing jobs, decreasing, um, and decreasing corruption in the government, all these economic, economic and political and legal reforms. Uh, which will only continue to help the economy grow. Okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about the nature of the competition of the Mexican liquor um, industry. First of all, it's highly diversified, meaning Mexicans drink a number of different liquors, tequila, gin, rum, vodka. So there's a number of different, you know, quality ranges, price ranges, so it's pretty much wide open. Um, the thing about brandy is that Mexicans care more about per the perception of quality as opposed to the actual quality itself. Sebastian said they do care about price, which is true. But in our marketing plan, we need to create a perception of quality. Uh, let me talk about a few of the direct competitors. Um, Pernod Ricard is the sixth largest um, spirits producer in the world, 22% share, share of the market, and pretty much our biggest competition. They have two established brandies, which are El Presidente and Don Pedro. Don Pedro being the more successful of the two. Um, both are domestically produced. They have local knowledge into the Mexican industry and established you know, supplier and distributor relationships. Uh, one more important um, brandy competitor is Reme Contru. Uh, an important thing about them is they established a, a joint venture distribution called Maxium. I think about eight or nine years ago. And this year is set to expire, which um, we are also a part of. Therefore, until they find a new way to distribute brandy into Mexico, we're not going to have to worry about them too much. In addition to brandy, we have to do it to compete with different types of spirits, too. Probably the second biggest competitor is Bacardi Limited, uh, based in the US, 20, almost 22% market share. You know, a lot of the more popular. Um, spirits in the United States and Mexico. And also um, Diageo, which produces um, the world's most famous tequila, 
uh, which competes directly with our own tequila, Sueza. So it's important that we understand that they're um, positioned in the market. I'm going to talk about the SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, first of all, we do have prior experience in the Mexican market with our tequila, with our um, supplier distribution relationships. Um, one of the more important things in our company is commitment to R&D. We're constantly innovating. We put forth 40% of our budget into R&D. Uh, as I said, we've been successful in partnerships, mergers, and acquisitions. And one of the more important things is we always have strong quality control. So standardization, making sure each bottle is you know, the same quality and consistency. Some of the weaknesses, though, if we have no experience in Mexico with brandy. We have it with tequila, but not brandy. So we're not completely sure of how Mexico will react to our product. Um, we currently do not have any production facilities in North America, which could hurt us you know, with NAFTA and having you know, a proximity to Mexico ge geographically. And also, we're competing against the two most popular brandies in Mexico, which are domestically produced, which I said before, El Presidente and Don Pedro. Um, some of the opportunities are the expansion of global trade with NAFTA, you know, uh, less in trade barriers will enable us to get our product into Mexico. Um, in addition, the lower price category in Mexico of, of brandy is less exclusive, meaning people have less brand loyalty than, say, the medium or higher, the higher um, quality. Some of the threats we have are established firms do have the first mover advantage. Therefore, they gain knowledge, they, they build relationships that we have to compete with. Uh, the drug wars, as Sebastian said, President Calderon is doing a lot to try to alleviate the chaos and the black market that the drug wars create, and this can affect the sales of our product. I remember, I think, President Obama today is actually going down and assisting him with, you know, policies towards us. Um, local competitors, <coughs> using defender strategies, pretty much maintaining their market position, not trying to grow, but holding steady, which, you know, since we're trying to grow, we need them to you know, give us some of their market share. And one last thing is that lifestyles in Mexico are moving towards more athletic, healthy, and more religious practices, which could or could not dissuade them from drinking alcohol. Okay, we'll talk about the potential target market. The potential target market for our product is male consumers between the ages of 25 and 35. The reason for this age bracket is because uh, consumers in their mid-20s and 30s are more established in their job, as well as <clears throat> more financially secure, and they have full autonomy in their purchasing and buying decisions. Uh, this male population is 8 million consumers, 64.9% of which uh, drink alcoholic beverages. That's 5.2 million people. Uh, additionally, the per capita consumption of alcohol is one liter annually. Uh, 